Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Thera Expressions Meditation, a place where mental health matters, and they are located in Wyoming. And I, Jemima Godsell, am an ambassador for mental health and for Thera Expressions Meditation. And this is my beautiful co-host, Darcy Mata. She's here. Wonderful, wonderful. We talk to you every week about mental health topics and issues uh we're both coming from a place of yes experience but generally friends and just trying to normalize the conversation around mental health and any issues around such things uh, a couple of things before we get started guys there is a disclaimer down below but more importantly there is a 1-800 number for you or for anyone who needs help just to remember that you are never alone we're here to also make sure you know that but just yeah, and if you have any questions or topics you want us to talk about, please swing it down below in the comments. But just remember that 1-800 there is there for you and for anyone else. Or if you know of someone and you're worried about them, you too can ring them to ask how, what to do, what are the spe steps to take with that sort of thing. Oh, yes, Doc. I just heard on uh, NPR that they have started a new um, emergency line for mental health crisis, 988. Yeah. So okay. Instead of, instead of dialing nine one one, you can dial nine eight eight. Okay. Is is that you will get mental health uh, support that way? Fantastic. So I, I don't know if it's it's going to be national because it's nine eight eight, but <clears throat> I don't know how well established it is yet. But I think yeah. that's amazing. That is amazing, and thank you, thank you. I didn't even know that. So everyone, let's uh, just try it. Just ring and see what happens, and if it doesn't work yet, hopefully nationally we'll get around to wherever we are. But, that's about yeah. bloody time, many people, about bloody time. Excuse yeah. my language. Um, anyway, so we're talking today. I had a massive, it's always about me. Yeah, I'm a t atypical mental health, uh, you know, uh, what is it? I don't know, thing, person. Anyway, <laughs> um, this week, guys, yesterday, I lost my cat of 14 years, almost 14 years. My warrior cat who's been through hell and back with me um, through a uh, coyotes got him. So okay. it was very unexpected, heartbreaking, and it's very difficult to deal with this loss. It's a, I was just telling Darcy, it's probably the longest relationship I've had out of my ex-husband, out of my parents, even because I wasn't there a lot. Um, and my sister too, because I've been away for so long. So it's kind of uh, heartbreaking. I don't, I don't really know how to deal with it right now. Um, but we we're also talking, Darcy and I, um, we, I'm moving to my real property. We were lucky we've got properties all around. But anyway, our real property this weekend, and I was so excited to take Butterball along. And yeah, you've got the trees, and he can go in the shade. And oh my gosh, this is, you know, everything is so fantastic. And um, he passed, you know, and there was kind of like, I always knew he'd go when he knew I was ready for him to go, when he knew I would be safe and mentally safe, spiritually safe, physically safe. And he didn't let didn't come into the next chapter and i think that's kind of fitting and fucking pardon me sorry it's freaking freaking sorry i'm sorry youtube it's freaking amazing like it's uncanny but he's also had emphysema and um he was nearly 14 quite old so also maybe he would have had a long extended death and i think he was such a trooper and been through so much and served my life with with my suicide attempt that he went just before we me and my lover started our whole new chapter in our permanent land I don't know. I don't know. So, <laughs> so that's where I'm at. And it's, I know everyone out there who knows if they have a pet, it's just more than sometimes more than a family member because they see you at every site, everything, and they are unconditional all the time. Sure. Those cats may give you a cold shoulder and not give you love when you don't need it. Like they're going to you get over it yourself. And I love that because I get you your strength, but um, you know, it's such a huge loss, isn't it? That just, yeah. that's nothing like a pet loss, nothing like a pet loss. It just breaks the heart and, and it's such a special form of love. And anyway, that's where I'm at. Uh, I'm so sorry about your loss. Thank you. I know, Thank you. I know losing a pet is literally like losing a family member. It really is. And, um, and any kind of big loss like that, you know, I, I suggest do a ceremony. Do a ceremony. Do a celebration of life. Yeah, we did a ceremony this morning, and I got all these rubber bands, all his toys. We couldn't find the body, but we do know he's got, and that's probably good. We can find the body. Hopefully, he was sorry to be graphic, guys, but sort of eaten like popcorn, like rabbits. That's why you never see rabbit bones because they get munched or the whole thing. And he was quite thin and fragile. So this morning, we got all his toys and got some sage and some incense and put some treats over the top of his grave and set a ceremony for him, just for closure for Chris and I to to find some sort of peaceful end to it right. and um 
cried a lot, cried a lot, and we laughed a lot. We had a lot of very, very, very good memories. I mean, here was our point, pivotal, pivotal point of laughter in our traumas. And when we were crying, we were always like, look at him, he's like just doing something silly and just rescued us from a sad moment. So, yeah, I mean, ceremony, guys, yeah, as Darcy was saying, very important to, to sort of honour the life and the love that was given to you and that you were able to give in return, you know. Yeah. Cats are interesting because they, <clears throat> they really do go when you are truly entering a new phase of life. So when your other phase of life is over, is usually when they transition and they disappear. And I've seen it happen so many times, uh, myself included. I had a cat that I loved named, well, I've had a couple of cats that I've loved, uh, <clears throat> but uh, they were, they were, he was caught by coyote. Definitely Sorry. caught by coyote. I saved him once from the coyote. I had to take him to the vet. He was he had even bitten his own tongue, but he needed oh, to get up the tree oh, and escape the coyotes. But he, like yours, needed to go out, insisted on going out. And I felt like, well, the neighborhood was very housey. It was in the hills. And I figured he had pretty good odds. Um, yeah. But even still, even still, he got the so, so. By a coyote. So did the other cat I had. I was living out in... Uh, Hollywood at the time. And so they have a lot of coyotes in LA. A lot of coyotes. In I'm LA. sorry. Yeah. Um, you have to get your cats in by four o'clock and you can't let them out until 7 a.m. because those guys are just wandering around. They, I even chased them up the hills with a broom. <laughs> like they would come, you know, down to the apartment looking for the cats. I saw them outside. I go out with my broom, I'm like, get out of here. And he just like walks a little way a little bit and looks at me. I'm like chasing yeah. him, walks away a little bit, looks at me, like, get over it, lady, you know. Um, <laughs> oh my god, god <laughs> so, so they they are they're so smart and they do, but the cat itself, the spirit of the cat, you know, they, they kind of live in both worlds, I do believe, at the same time, you know. Definitely. Um, they see way beyond. You know they see beyond. When they look at things and you go, you're looking at something that's not in this three dimension. Or they're speaking, they relate, and you just know. You can feel it. You go, Whoa! It's amazing. Powerful. It is so powerful. It's so interesting. And and when they go is when we've either made a decision and we're and we're moving towards something or, you know, like we've said, okay, this is changing right now. And the and the cat will definitely go. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Um, I saw it when my friend's daughter uh, became, went from being a teenager to a woman. Her cat disappears. Wow. Yeah, she goes into a whole new phase. Uh, always right before you move, right around when you're moving, when you've made a decision to really change your life. So Jemima, and, uh, you have a lot to say goodbye to. You've changed your life. Yeah. 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 It's just the unexpectedness of it that the, like so excited we're both chris and i are both so excited because we just we got we till we uh, landscaped our land by hand um the, the two of us we were so into it just by by carefully being careful with nature and and for butterball designing it for butterball and getting him a new kitty box the next day before we move tomorrow like all this new stuff and I know he also looked at me when I said, you've only got one more trip in the RV, little one, one more. I know he looked at me going, hell no. <laughs> and he, you know, so to Chris, like, oh, my God, there's no way he's going to, like, we're going to have to walk him there, jokingly. You know, and I know the coyote, well, he didn't expect the coyote, but, but the timing of it, the angels, the divine timing, everything is as it's planned, as it's meant to be, sort of set in. And I had to think that yesterday. I think this is, look at the plot of it. It's so uncanny, so well-timed. And so it's got goosebumps. And so... um. So that maybe he did know. I mean, he knew there were some mornings we didn't let him out because we could still hear them. They usually went in at about four, and he had demanded to be out by five. And that more, yes, and so he knew so, sometimes we kept him in longer. But yesterday there was no case. But I think maybe you know, I just think I don't know. He, he knew in a way. It was it was just all well, the angels said divine timing. Like now is the time for him to go and uh, just it's that, just that un just the, the unexpectedness and no preparation and the excitement of starting with him sort of creates a create is feeling like just a whole different loss because we didn't get him to where i hoped he would be really really happy and god he was he's been so happy since a i've been sober but b 
since we got to here to our property, like to be able to run free. I mean, he owned this property. He was running free, bouncing around. Like right? <laughs> he's just a little crazy little kitty. But what a, what a statement, hey, what a statement to a new beginning, a new whole new beginning, just Chris and I and starting our life together. You know, it's really quite profound. Yeah. That's amazing. That's really amazing. Yeah. I, you know, a long time ago, my mom said to me when she, when my grandmother passed away, um, my grandmother passed away at the rest home in the beauty parlor. You know, they had those hair dryers that, that oh, yeah. on top of their heads and they have their curlers, right? And she was getting her hair done and she passed yes. away there. Yes. Fell gosh. Asleep, just went out. And apparently that's pretty common. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Why do you use them? Why do you use them? But apparently that's, you know, Anyway, that's how she expired, <laughs> getting her hair done, which was so befitting of my grandmother. Like, really? And my mom said, she goes, even when you're prepared, you're yeah. still not prepared. True. Of course. That's true. Yeah. Even when you, so, you know, you make your preparations, you get ready, you deal with it. She had a cat that was 22 years old, my mother. Beautiful. 22 years old and it was an outdoor cat. Wow. Wow. It had been around for a long time. And this is right when I moved in to take care of my mom. I am not mm. joking. I move in to take care of her with my son. I'd been there for a couple of months. I sat the outdoor cat. Um, uh, I fed it for my mom. She was always worried about the outdoor cat. And I'm like, mom, that cat does not look good <laughs> so, and then it started sleeping on the front porch mm. and it smelled and I'm like, you know your cat's gonna go soon and then um it disappeared and my mom goes go look for it i don't want the gardeners to find it you go find oh my god i had to go search for this cat. <laughs> i'm like going around all the neighbor's yards just looking for my cat. <laughs> but I did. I did find him in the hedge of my neighbors, you know, tucked underneath. And she was expiring. Mm. So I picked him up, her up, took her to the vet. And that was the end of her life. She was expiring. Um, it was very interesting. So um, she didn't have to go out in the yard and get thrown in with the the leaves and debris in other words so we sent her off that way um and my mom was so broken up about it because she'd had her for 22 years but it was right when i moved in to take care of my mom in her you know her end of life phase can't make that up can you you really no, can't it's no, just a it's amazing and i thought to myself oh okay 22 years this outdoor cat's been with my mom and I show up okay my mom's got about four years I think yeah, four yeah. Years. Right. right I know that spaz uh my spaz is my other cat I know because he was a little spaz he had a little brain damage and he's rocked his head all the time it was a perfectly fitting name um when he he was the one who actually the tattoo was related to both of them but spaz was on my chest after my suicide attempt I remember I always say that I swear he was there giving breathing life into me not going to get off my chest he was very much a lap cat too and my cat he was very much my mama's cat and it was about the three months after my suicide attempt he passed and he was he aged very quickly after that because i think he was exhausted through keeping me alive yeah and making sure i was going to come back um which i believe he did and i know he was exhausted from that moment and three months later he he had a brain aneurysm and passed away and i thought yeah even that that in itself you know it's a little longer after my suicide attempt but even still he was still worried to say oh no she's, she's still all shaky but i just got on my road trip so you know he was and i was when i got to the new mexico um community he passed away and i thought even then i remember going this is kind of uncanny this is like and i remember saying then butterball's not gonna butterball's gonna wait until there's something else happens and it's been a while but only about a year and a half but no, about a year and wow. now yeah, and now it's perfect, you know, it's perfect timing because it's a really big change in my life and 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 permanent permanence of change and healthy change and loving change and he knows as I said I'm safe physically, mentally, spiritually and, and loved physically, mentally, spiritually. So bless his cotton socks, little little what a trooper. I just just missed him this morning. I really did. Really missed him this morning. He woke us up, he was uncanny, like he was jumping our face. <laughs> or sorry, YouTube or my nipples. He go ding, ding, ah! I mean, he's got to know where my nipples are. 
You know, he knows my eyeballs, the nipples, you know, always going to be ball. Like there's so many other places you can jump. <laughs> this is where he gets the best uh, <laughs> Totally. Oh, my oh, best. Right <laughs> straight to the pain point. Oh, my gosh. Bless him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, big impact. But, yeah, so everyone, you know, I mean, dealing with loss and grief is challenging, isn't it? Chris and I were saying last night, you know, you just have to, you can't not feel it. You have to move through it. Like you're forced to mourn and celebrate as well as mourning but there's that heartbreak you feel like that cross that in your heart center and it's just amazing powerful feeling of love like how powerful is love like it's such a beautiful thing to feel so much and to connect so deeply um spiritually emotionally physically to to a pet or to a person but this in this case our pet and it's like profound sort of processing of of the, of dealing with it you know and right now i'm grieving big time but just feeling that it's like oh i just want to go get messed up I'm not going to because it's pointless i'll feel worse afterwards but damn it hurts hurts like hell hurts 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 that big gap in your heart you know big loss big loss but i think that that's really important what you just said is that to allow yourself to feel it and to allow the power of that healing you know a lot of people would say, yeah, let's go get messed up. You know, so many people go get drunk after a funeral, et cetera. But it, that just prolongs the process, period. It just and it just affects the hangover. You know, like the next morning you feel worse because you feel sick. Yeah, anyway. So, yeah, yeah, because also you haven't really allowed yourself to finish processing. Totally. So that means you're going to have to process the next day or the day after or the day after that. And if you keep drinking in order to stop the process well then you're just going to have to keep putting the process off so true. so true you know and so eventually you'll have to have your moment where you face it yourself the loss etc <clears throat> without hopefully without the booze or the drugs or whatever has been facilitating the avoidance right and you know to really embrace big feelings Big feelings are so important. So how much power is in that? Like you just said, you just really discovered how much love you can have for somebody or something. Yeah. How much love we can have if we really let ourselves experience that mm -hmm. as opposed to avoiding it all the time. And it's such a beautiful trait of humans. And I wish everyone would tap into it. I, I wish for everyone and hope for everyone to tap into it because it's beautiful it's powerful even though it comes everything comes with the light and the dark otherwise you don't experience the light or the dark but it's just so worthy worthwhile all the joy and all the all the beauty and strength and compassion and dedication and and uh all those beautiful words uh to be able to feel that it's just a beautiful human trait beautiful friend i mean most of the time i think humans can sometimes suck because yeah, <laughs> we totally do right. things unconsciously <laughs> and i'm including me including me i must say <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah totally so but the, this this quality of today really made me stop and go god this is a beautiful thing we can be beautiful energy we can hold within and if we all could not be afraid to feel it and not be afraid of the darkness that comes that can come with it what a beautiful world this would be you know what a beautiful place we could create with amongst the beasts, the animals, the nature we have around us. Yeah, we have so much, so many opportunities to rise to our higher selves. Yeah. So many opportunities to, even in the ugliest places, there's always some beauty and something worthy of your love. Mm -hmm. It really is. I remember I was living in New York City and there was this nasty lady that lived upstairs. <clears throat> she had a beautiful dog. She was just nasty. <clears throat> like her, you ring the door, the elevator bell and the elevator opens, she's like this. <laughs> Are you going, I didn't have an arrow. And I said, Are you going up or down? She goes, I have my dog. I'm like, Are you going down? <laughs> she didn't even answer. She just didn't answer. And so I get in the elevator. And I go, <sighs> I was just, I was unconscious. I just, <sighs> and she goes, <sighs> and I said, well, you could have answered. And she goes, 
Like, oh my God. Like, she was nasty. And the dog, the beautiful dog is between us. And it looks at me like this. Mm-hmm. Oh. Look back at her. Mm-hmm. And all I could think of was oh, that poor dog living with this nasty old lady. I mean, she wasn't old. This nasty lady. Just nasty person. Mean, nasty. And we were leaving and... I, you know, I let her go ahead of me, of course. And I look at the dog going, oh, bless your heart, you poor dog. What karma are you fulfilling? <laughs> and then I thought, you know, good thing. Good thing she's got that dog. How amazing is that, that she has that dog? And, you know, she probably had her best behavior with the dog. You know, she was probably, that's where she so showed. Loving, kind. Yeah generous yes yeah. yeah, she was probably a really great mom dog yeah because she was nasty <laughs> yeah, but, but, yeah yeah it was kind of an amazing an eye-opener for me to go yes even the nastiest people could find something somewhere yeah in themselves if they allowed them to so good for her for finding some place to find love or put love or you know cherish something somebody beyond herself maybe yeah. that'll you know and i do think that people who are afraid to love like that are just purely scared of the darkness of losing of of rejection of not being accepted of all of those things and then you feel see people who go oh it's just a pet just a cat that sort of thing or just a dog and you think you're the one who is so scared to love you're the one who does has missed out on such a joyful journey poss- uh, mostly <laughs> and and then yeah the sadness when it, with the loss but what i think not experience any of that is the biggest loss ever like such a loss of life such a loss of feeling what we can be beautiful how we can be beautiful people and beautiful energy in us and and i just feel for them and you know, i understand life has to have the darkest people to balance out the lightest angels and the majority of us come in the middle but um yeah, gosh, what a loss to not be able to feel like this, not be able to experience heart, heartbreak, heartbreak and, and real joy. mourning. Yeah, joy, or joy. And others. I mean, Chris and I are sitting here. I mean, Chris has only known him for a year and he's so brokenhearted. He thought he would never, his last pet was Jake, his dog, and he had him for 14 years. And he oh. thought he would never get a pet again. And, he, you know, obviously, but of course, mine comes along with me. Um, but oh my God, he's mourning him so much. And I thought, yeah, because because as I said, Butterball was a daddy's boy and he loved Chris. He came in and was like, and Chris loved him and they bonded yeah. like nothing. And finally, Butterball had this male figure back in his life and no more mummy. That's okay, little one here. And <laughs> I just loved him, loved him, loved him. And they're just, it's just profound the, the experience of, of, of that has, 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 he he gave Chris only for the year as well. Like he thought I'd never be able to love a, a pet again. Didn't want to love a pet again because of the fear of loss. And now here he is going. But and we laugh during like we're bawling our eyes like oh, he's doing this. <laughs> you know, like just this beautiful laughter and that we can still find joy in the tragedy. You know, and joy in the the darkest hour that he can give us. It's just profound, 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 absolutely profound. Right. The quite quite that energy with you and you'll see him a lot oh yeah, right? yeah out of the corners of your eye you'll see him just like you see your other cat yeah. right they definitely just kind of hang around in that etheric i think they think they can do more on the other side yeah. oh that's beautiful they can do more that way than they can do here so yeah that's amazing yeah pretty pretty Incredible experience. I'm glad I'm sober for it. I like same with spaz. Same with spaz. I was glad I was sober for spaz too. It just, I'm mean, spaz it was new because the emotions were so new. You know, this, the rawness of the emotion probably stung a little more because it was so, I was feeling, <laughs> I was feeling for the first time in a long time, you know, real, real feelings. Um, but Butterball really, yeah, it's, it's a evolvement. It's an evolution of my life, of his life, of Chris's life. Uh, and stepping into a whole new beautiful um, partnership with my lover and just him and I. And that's, that's you know, we can't use Butterball as a distraction now. <laughs> you know, sometimes he was really good. No, look at Butterball. <laughs> I don't want to look at Butterball. <laughs> you know, and, um, yeah, so anyway, that's, that's nice. very funny. That's yeah. Very funny. Oh. Cheers to Butterball. Are you pulling us a card, my love? I am pulling you a card. Um, yes. Um, 
But so anyone out there who's lost a pet just while you're pulling a car, just know that feel those feelings. Big feelings are okay. And just because someone said it's just a pet, it doesn't mean anything. Don't worry. They don't understand. They don't have to. So it doesn't worry about anyone. What anyone says, you honor your feelings and go, go with the flow of the process of the loss. And you'll be fine. And just remember those good times. Remember that beautiful, unconditional love they gave you and how profound it is. It's, it's nothing like a human love. So cheers to all those pets out there we've lost and love it and live it. And I love you, buttercup. Uh, there it's, yeah. Family, it takes all shapes and forms. Yeah. Right? That's what I say. Sure does. It's all about, it's all about family, creating your own family. Okay. I may have to change my glasses for this. Okay. <laughs> 100% authentic people. Yeah. <laughs> Reading glasses, computer glasses. Oh, yeah. I got Bless you. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I can see great on the computer with those, but I can't see the little print. Oh, right. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> now I can see. So I am using um, Diana Cooper, her angel yeah. animal cards, right? Yeah. Angel animals. And so um, I I pulled Kingfisher. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful bird. Wow, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Kingfish. And the Kingfisher says, be patient and focused. And the, these beautiful birds are third dimensional and come from Sirius. They live in and by water, which is one of your issues right now. Um, water contains the love energy of the universe, and kingfishers carry this pure, unconditional love in their aura and spread it wherever they fly. Oh, that's a nice feeling. And I'm a Pisces too. So, yeah, yeah. the water energy. And yeah. when, when you gasp, with pleasure as a kingfisher flashes past you your sudden elevation in consciousness opens doors of opportunity in the universe oh i love that idea mm, mm. your sudden elevation in consciousness opens doors of opportunity in the universe mm. this bird is demonstrating the importance of maintaining clear and positive thoughts and being ready for any break or chance that comes your way Kingfishers teach us about patience. While they wait serenely to catch a fish, they are holding their focus on one appearing. That's a really profound mm -hmm. thing. Mm, so they're yeah. focusing and waiting for the fish that they know will appear, right? Um, I think humans have a tendency to wait with worry, mm -hmm. worry that it's not going to appear as opposed to wait with anticipation mm. that you know. Totally. A real significance there. By their positive intent, they attract the fish. And as soon as their goal is in sight, they act immediately. I mm. love that. This card is reminding you it is time to be clear about your heart's desire. Set your vision positively and ask that it comes to you in a way that brings a positive outcome for everyone. Once you have decided what you wish to bring into your life, be prepared, be calm and patient while you focus on it intently. Watch out for any signs from the universe or intuitions that may direct you to a course of action, but do not let your thoughts waver. Remember that they are inevitably drawing your desire to you. As soon as it is within your grasp, immediately take action. This is a moment for speed and energy. The universe is about to offer you an opportunity, so stay positive and grounded. Something good is coming your way. I can take that. Thank you, Bible. So we are saying, yes, that cats leave at the specific moment for a specific reason. Yeah. And that you are getting more and more focused every day to my and We're moving today now. We're moving today instead of yesterday because it was so tragic. Um, yeah, and we really were talking about the healing space, you know, like really going now we've got to do this on behalf of Butterbox. We wanted him to be a part of it and be there if, if, you know, if he was ever around that long to have people sort of come in, he'd be the token cat. So, you know, now we were saying last night, we've got to get this going in honor of him, a little pluck for Butterball sort of thing. So... <laughs> You know, God bless yeah, him. Yeah, that was not his job, right? He had a different job. His job was for you. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. 
Thank you, Darcy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hey, um, peace to you, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> and I hope you're all okay. Have a beautiful weekend. Thank you, Darcy. I love you to bits. Love, love you, Jemima. Thank you. Peace out, everyone.